Hello everyone, this is Jacob Popio, the producer of the Apex. In this episode, Jan and RJ sit down with Canton South High School alum Malik Allen. Malik reminisces on his feelings of pressure to go to his school even though he wasn't ready. He failed out of Kent State University, then went to Shawnee State where he would thrive and ultimately be accepted to a chiropractic school in New York. If you want to support us, there are two ways to do so. One is to donate to our cause at www.patreon.com backslash the Apex Podcast. The other is completely free. All we ask is if you learn something from this episode or know someone who needs to hear our message, share it with them. Please subscribe and hope this pushes you toward your Apex. Welcome, Apex Chasers, to another episode of the Apex Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jan Almasy, and today, seated across the table from me, is my partner in crime, Mr. R.J. Holiday. It is me this time. Yeah, you've I, taken a break a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, we haven't done an interview in forever. It's so. been a long time. I'm, I'm actually nervous. really, really looking forward to this. This living room is very hot and sweaty. You guys look at me on the camera, <laughs> and I'm just flop sweating. You know why? Sweet. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm actually, uh, we have a, this is going to be the first episodes that we've really focused on um, allowing the newest member of the Apex team, Alyssa, um, Maybe we have professional lighting and DSLR cameras. Look at us doing big things outside of using our iPhones. And insert picture of a and a lamp. Here. Yeah, boop. she could just <laughs> boop. Hi. Um, so today we are interviewing a, a gentleman that I've known for a long time. Um, he's known me since I was five six, two forty, wearing skinny jeans, painting my nails with long hair. So he's been around for a minute. Uh, he's known me since high school. I went to Cannes South High School with him. Uh, and we're going to explore what I think is one hell of a story uh, about what it takes to get to your dream and what you're trying to achieve. I want to hear more about your pain and nails. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Dude, dude, I was homeschooled for the first 13 years of my life. I came into high school. Like, if you want to go back, listen to the anxiety podcast that we released. Um, I think it's called How to Deal with Anxiety. And if you listen to that show, I mean, I was a wreck when I first got to high school. A lot of Papa Roach, P.O.D. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> pop, yeah, a lot of disturbed, you know, I'm jamming out. The <laughs> 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 I, mean, um, I still listen to music, but. Oh, I love that heavy metal stuff. But I, I mean, I just did that to kind of, that was the only group of people that were willing to accept me, really, mm. um, and have my back and I felt safe with. So I just adapted and I was like, cool, like this group of people likes long hair and their nails painted and wearing cookie monster hats and skinny Thanks. jeans. <laughs> and now I'm like anti all of that. I have no idea how I would ever wear skinnies ever again, mostly because I'm not skinny. I'm not skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't fit. That's one right. true problem. But before we dive too far down that rabbit hole, we'll go ahead and introduce our guest so he can talk. Yeah. You know, that's the polite uh, thing laughing. to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, please welcome to the show, Mr. Malik Allen. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, Yonko and RJ, for having me. Oh, absolutely. He busted out the Yonko. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, We're going to yeah. talk about it. Yeah, he oh, called you so, that earlier. Yonko. So everybody that has known me prior to, I'd say, 16 called me Yonko. Yeah. Okay, so in Slovak culture, the KO means little. So it's little John or little Jan, right? Then after you turn 16, I kind of started having, and I introduced myself as Jan and had people you know, talk to me as Jan, mm -hmm. um, but not Jan. Yeah, I remember the Yanko. Yep. Yeah. There's a very select group of people yeah. that still remember that. Him and your sister are the only two that I've ever heard you heard them call you that. Yep. <laughs> yep. So if you hear him say Yanko, he's talking about Jan. Mm -hmm. It's the same <laughs> thing. Right. It just means little version of me because he's known me for so long. I that, prefer that. I couldn't even yeah. imagine calling him Jan though. Like I, in my phone and in my contacts, it's Yanko. And I'm like, is it really? I almost nice. thought about changing it to Jan once when I saw it on Facebook. And I'm like, that's just doesn't look right, man. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel right. My sister gets pissed really, when people uh, say it. Yeah. She's like, no, it's Yonko. And I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> professionally, people know me as Yon. I was like, that's what's on my name badge. It's my legal name. Like, mm. <laughs> I don't want to confuse people. So, yeah, we'll just roll with it for the rest of Wait, the show. Wait, did you write that when you were, like, Yonko? You, yeah. When I was a kid? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't uh, really know. I was signing a bunch of documents at 11. Well, that's true. But, like, <laughs> obviously. So. Well, you said you were homeschooled, too. So, you would probably. Yeah. What? what that is, the homeschooling thing? Um, that actually makes perfect sense because I remember when Yonko started there, 
um, I don't know who it was, but someone told me, they're like, there's some kid named Yanko here. And I'm like, Yanko? Like, what kind of name is that? Like, I've never even heard of that name before. I Hello. thought, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't the whole time. Then I seen him there with the painted nails and the skinny jeans. And I said, uh, there goes Yanko. Looks like okay. a Yanko to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that, that's what they look like. <laughs> But so why don't you just, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. You can start wherever you want. You know, just tell us what you're doing now, who you are, kind of. Uh, where'd you grow up? Obviously, you went to Canton South, so yeah. people know mm -hmm. that. The Canton South High School, right, guys? Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, cats. I've been here my whole life. Um, went to Perry College, elementary, Faircrest, middle school, then Canton South, where I, you know, met Yonko. And um, from there, I just, my journey was just kind of. All over the place. Huh? Is Perry College even still a thing? Oh no, they tore it down. Did dude. they? Man, yeah. they, they tore, tore down, down the, my birthday too. They turned out. They tore down the high school too just that I graduated from. Ripped it all just, down. Yeah, I was like, and like we used to go out there and play basketball even when after I had finished, you know. And I'm like, oh man, tore it down my birthday. Kind of messed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> up there. Yeah. So you graduated from Canton South, and then what? Uh, then I went to Kent for a couple years, which was a couple forgettable years. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> then after that, um. You know, the whole story with Kent, I ended up going to Shawnee State, um, graduating with my bachelor's in exercise science, and um, just got accepted into chiropractic school here about a couple of months ago. So Good stuff, man. Nice. Yeah. Good. So so that's kind of, you know, the general outline. You know, that's the trailer yeah, that's the, that's the, for what's going to come. But what I kind of want to address first, I mean, there were the, – uh, Part of the thing that we do on the Apex is look at lessons that people learn that they end up going back to and realizing yes. were important, even though they may not have realized that they were important as they were experiencing them at a younger mm -hmm. age. There's a lot of things that I can talk about as far as being at Canton South or my first couple years of college that as I was going through them, I didn't understand the value. But looking back in hindsight, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. that I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that knew what they were talking about. And I know there's some teachers at Canton South that really affected me. I'm kind of curious to see what your take is on maybe some lessons that you've learned while, when you went to Canton South. You know, one of the most impactful people I have to say is Mr. Brickwood, um, Eric Brickwood. Um, Yanko knows him. I mean, one of the nicest people I had. Uh, my Canton South journey was, wasn't Handshake always. Handshake and a shoulder squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Eric Brickwood in a nutshell. Yes. That, I mean, professional, um, caring. Always was willing to go the extra mile for me when I would um, have to stay after school until my parents would pick me up. Always stay there, talk to me, even if I was having a rough day. Um, he was just someone that was in my life that I will always be thankful for. And um, he taught me lessons. I remember one time I had, was really upset about my brother. Um, he had just moved out of our house. And he just told me, he said, look, man, like, I get that you're upset, but you got to focus on yourself right now because you got to finish high school. You know? And I was just like, oh, man, he's gone. Like, I don't want to. He's far away from here, you know, I don't get to see him much, and he's just like, look, right right now is you. Your brother will be there, and you'll be able to talk to him, and you'll be able to have those conversations and work on seeing him when you want to, but now it's just for you to focus on yourself. Right. Yeah. And get through what you need to get through. Sometimes you gotta be a little selfish. Yeah, and, it's yeah. Not even, and, it, and even in the sense, he was just basically telling me that, like, don't lose yourself, you know, stressing out over this. Mm -hmm. You know, so... That's that's something I really appreciate. And I actually actually just messaged him like two weeks ago about that. And I said, thanks for talking to me for that long. Because I was actually crying after school about it. Right. Um, he took me aside. And well, there's definitely, I mean, high school's rough, man. Ah, yeah, man. People like, don't realize that, man. It's there's, I mean, this entire movement, this entire company started because of all the suicides that happened in Stark County <laughs> with yeah, all the high school seriously. kids. You know what I mean? I mean it's, um, I think, yeah. underestimated how brutal some of that that social structure can be kids are mean. for sure yeah yeah they're vicious man it seems like it's like i mean the ones in perry i mean that was just mm. that was like astonishing i'm like really like and it was like and it was like one after like a month later another one and i'm like i think it's just one of those things where a lot of yeah, kids i think there was six or seven total yeah. in six months yeah I'm like, wow. it was horrible we set the national record i'm pretty sure which is really? you wow. not a uh, national record you want to be yeah i don't think you'll yeah. be part of that <laughs> no no yeah wow I did not know that. Mm -hmm. It was just one right after another, right after another, right after another, which is why we're, you know, the, the Apex um, team is starting a new um, movement called the We Heart Stark Stories yeah. of Stark County podcast cool. um, to kind of really highlight the stories of Stark County, the positives, you know, all the, the cool things that are going on, the cool things that people are doing, the history that's contained here. It is an awesome county. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff that has happened in Stark County, especially in Canton. Um, that it's Canton on a national level though just gets such a bad rap 
all no. can Cleveland, Akron. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And nobody talks about it. Outside of the Football Hall of Fame, nobody yeah. talks about it in, in a, a really positive good, light. In a positive light. And even yeah. sometimes a Football Hall of Fame yeah, is like, still Wah. pretty bad. I know that we have like two, I always tell people, we have two weeks where we're like on top of the world. Like, ooh. Yeah, like, ooh, okay, no, <laughs> yeah. everybody's there, you know? And then like those two weeks go on and we're like, yeah. oh, number, like, number five in the nation for small cities. Murders. And, yeah. 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 Oh, crime. sweet. Violent crime. Oh. <laughs> Great. So, well, uh, is there any other time like outside of just talking to. Uh, Mr. Brickwood that night. That's like, you know, that's that's something that's powerful emotionally. That's like knowing yeah, that somebody was there for you and everything else it like was, that. Yeah. Now, when you encountered things later on in life, how did you apply that lesson? Or is there another lesson that you had that's like a something that you've applied that you can t- tell that you've used on a daily basis? Well, even and as I get into the story about Ken, even realizing that like just because you feel like it's the end, it's really sometimes it's not. That's just a stepping stone. Um, and as we'll elaborate a little bit more about the Ken thing, you know, when I filled out there, I felt like it was just you fit you so so let's let's back up then. Yeah. You know, why don't we why don't we lead into what happened and yeah. and everything? You know, so you you graduated high school mm-hmm. and we'll just kinda go from there. Right. So I graduated high school, um everybody was I'm going to bowling green, I'm going to Ohio State, and I'm like I guess I should pick a college, right? you know? <laughs> yeah. like, Wait, like, what time is it? Yeah, I'm like, I guess I should probably do that school thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, I remember, actually, it was like a month before um the first, like, the beginning of the semester started for fall of 2013. I went to advisor, and um, he's like, you have any um degrees? Or, I mean, not degrees, like, any um majors in mind that you want to do? And I was just like, which one has, like, the less math? <laughs> he's like, he's like, give me the least amount of numbers, please. And he's like, communications. And I'm like, so I'm doing communications now, you know? Mm-hmm. So... It wasn't even a thing where I felt like I was ready for it. Mm. It was a thing where I felt like I was almost pressured into it. You know, oh, that's absolutely yeah. How because I felt. it's a stigma, you know. Like mm. even to backtrack a little bit more, even when we were in high school, it was always this college coming to visit you, this college coming yeah. to visit you. What are you doing? Yeah, where are you going after this? So oh, it's like an assembly line almost. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, they try to they try to funnel you on through and then get you out of there and into right. some college. And exactly, my my pig-headedness was like oh you know you won't have to worry about that because you'll be good at sports or be good enough to sports that a team will just want you right and then of course selling wrestling and then you know those are far and few between and whatnot and it's like oh i have to actually choose a place to go and then pay them money right i was like never thought about that (laughs) that's where they get you (laughs) see um and then from there i mean i ended up going to kent um first semester i think i finished with like a 1.9 so I was like, ooh, 1.9. That's like four points more than what I had when I graduated high school, which was, yeah, was 1.5. Yeah. Grad- yeah. What did you graduate high school with? Uh, with like the 1.5. 1.5, yeah. yeah that was, and that was a wow. shining accomplishment right there. Well, it right. felt to me, at least. You, know? you had the diploma. Yeah, I got, right. the, I got the diploma. And I'm like, hey, it doesn't say 1.5 on the diploma. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Diplomas, are, yeah. D's get degrees. And <laughs> at that time, I didn't realize how bad of a mentality that was. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like to think of, like, think of it that way. At least it doesn't show it up on there. Or at least no one else will ever know what my actual GPA was. So right, yeah. right. But uh, well I now mean, now everybody gonna know. Yeah, yeah everybody right. gonna know. Now, the GPA. Now, see, not a whole world. It's knows irrelevant now. Yeah. though. Maybe yeah. it was a one point six or nine. <laughs> Round <laughs> up. Everybody. Yeah. Right. But um, I finished that first semester at Kent with a with one point nine, and um, they put me on academic probation, and I remember actually getting the uh, email. They're like. Uh, you know, like you're, you did not meet the standard of like mm-hmm. a 2.0 here, and like you're on academic probation now. And I was just like, oh, okay. I'm like a little bit nervous now. I'm like, oh, no, I actually gotta like, you gotta try, do, try. Yeah, pay yeah. attention, right? Buckle down. And I did the exact opposite the next semester, and I finished with a 1.4. <laughs> so, right back down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't even brag about high school. It was better than high school because it was actually right. worse. You know, so um. At that time, I was a little bit nervous because usually my friend told me that they give you one time of academic probation and then they kick yeah. you out. Well, kids, most do. Some, yeah. It depends. Yeah. Depends on the college, right. but par exactly. for the course. Yeah. Did you just not like your classes, or are you not interested in what you were hey, learning, or what? You know, the crazy part. A lot of people think like, did you just not go to class? I actually missed like I think I only missed like three or four classes. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't engaged. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't want to be there. Um, I felt like I was just going through the motions. 
I had no clue. People would ask me, like, what are you going to do with this communications degree? I'm like, I don't even know. What can you do with it? I had yeah. zero clue. What I, I switched right. my majors a whole bunch yeah. of times. Before yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I was really looking forward to this interview. And, you know, we talked about our right. dynamic about preparation slash lack of preparation. Mm. I purposely not told him a whole lot of anything yeah. Yeah. about this because he, I think, had a very similar Story. experience, experience. Uh, yeah. Yeah. that you did. I just it kept happens. running into problems. Yeah. Like, I was really good at computer programming in high school. I actually did post-secondary for it. Get to college, and they're like, oh, if you want to do computer programming, you might as well just sit behind a desk 80 hours a week by yourself in a little room, mm-hmm. just plugging away at a computer. And I was like, nah, that sounds man. miserable. Not, yeah. I was like, I'll get 300 pounds in the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I was like, I'm far too sociable of a person to yeah. work in that type of environment. So you switch there. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll go for some, uh, like, criminal justice. How hard is it to be a cop? Yeah. Which, very hard to be a cop. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, turns like out. The hardest, like, yeah, literally, the hardest thing for me is I don't like ruining anybody's day. Right. So if a person's doing 70 in a 35 and I pull them over, whether I'm in the wrong or just doing my job or whatever it is, I am not going to go home happy when, you know, a mother so- of three – bitches it's, me out because yeah. I'm doing my job even though they were the ones in the wrong. Right. And I was like, no, I guess I I, I, I can't have somebody hating me. You're just not fit for that. Yeah, yeah. Big, for me doing my job. So I was like, well, time that to switch sense. again. I would <laughs> I would never be a nurse then either. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no. That, would, that wouldn't have worked for me either. Oh, but yeah. yeah. And then I fell into exercise science as well and then really? graduated from, I transferred, I went to Kent State Stark for a while. Basically finished everything up I could there, and then transferred up to Akron and graduated there from there go, eventually. Yep, I didn't even yep, know yep. they had exercise science there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I went for I went for sport management. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, sports management. Now he's podcasting. Yes, yeah. There you that. go, man. Well, actually, Akron decided to completely get rid of the sport management under the exercise science. Really? Uh, right in the middle of me trying to graduate with it. Uh, which really upset me <laughs> because I was halfway through the program yeah. and I'm like learning a lot. Like I'm taking kinesiology classes and stuff. And I'm like, <clears throat> where's the management part? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm yeah. really here for. And they're like, uh, uh, I talked to my gone. counselor one day and they're like, um, yeah, we felt that there wasn't enough of the management. Your so we're actually, Kermit there's the currently a sport management starting underneath the business college. Yeah. And if you finish out the exercise science sport management concentration, you'll be the last class that graduates with it from Akron. Yeah. And I was like, so you're telling me if a, someone asks me about a job, I'm like, yeah, that's a non-existent program at <laughs> Akron anymore. Glad I have it. Oh, and they're like, oh, right. yeah, well, you can switch into the other one under the business college, but that'll be two and a half more years on your program. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I was like, I was like. I, I had just transferred there too yeah. because by the time I transferred, most of it was done. Uh-huh. And I'm like, "You're telling me nobody mentioned this to me? You, this just came they didn't up tell in the you last that when you... No, <laughs> I seemed like an important I have no thing. clue. They probably were sitting there like, "Oh, this idiot doesn't even realize he's oh, about well, to get long into." Long story short, my first counselor had to call campus security to take me, escort me out of his office. Really? Because he dead up, straight up looked me in the eyes and goes, "I don't think you understand." And I said. I don't think you understand who pays your bills. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's probably why he wanted you out there. He's like, nah, don't, don't tell He's me the like, reality. <laughs> Can oh you come gosh. and get him? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, a lot of hopping around, a lot of just feeling yeah. like I don't know it what happens. I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And this is kind of what I want to do. But once I fell into what I actually liked, it was far easier for me to excel in my classes and actually want and to And that's there. something that I kind of want to explore, right? Yeah. That's what I was hoping that you guys, you know, would – Connect on? Well, no, 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 no. I, I love, I love your banter. I love you going off on your tangents. But, but something that I really want to address, and something that I really got, because all of this started because I read a post that Malik put on Facebook, mm-hmm. right? And I read it, and I've read it over and over again, kind of trying to wrap my head around what I wanted to explore while we're here. But something that I really wanted to explore is, right now in Malik's story, we're looking at going from high school, feeling socially pressured to go to college, to go to go college to and yep. get a degree ending up in college, struggling with it because you're not engaged, you don't actually know what you want, dumping all of this money into the university, oh, oh God, yeah. right? So money. you're at like 1.4 GPA, but you yeah. still paid, you know, 10 grand. They don't you give you percents off for no, no, no GPAs. No. There's so, no discounts. <laughs> yeah, so you're at that place. So 
from your guys' perspectives, because I didn't have that experience in college. You know, yeah. I, I thought I wanted to be an English professor because of a, a, a teacher that we had in high school, and I love the English language and poetry, and every, that's why I'm so good at the blogging. Mm-hmm. Um, but you guys went to school, and I fell into nursing right off the bat and just kind of ended up loving it by chance. Mm-hmm. What was it like, and you know, what advice would you give to a senior in high school knowing your experience currently going into that university setting kind of idea that may not really understand what they're trying to pursue. Going undecided. Yeah, I agree. Oh, 100%. I 100%. Yeah. That's what my sister's boyfriend did. He went in undecided, took as many classes and That's stuff that he could. The gen eds and stuff. Yeah, gen eds that still counted towards credits, but were That's broad and diverse had. enough that he dabbled in criminal justice, dabbled in art, dabbled in this, dabbled in that. And then finally he was just like, I actually really like criminal justice. I take to it well. And now he's, when he graduates from Kent, he'll basically, I forget how it works, but he'll be basically through the academy and then he gets to skip all that and he'll be just walks out of there as a cop or something. I don't, I don't really remember, but yeah, he, he loved it. He didn't get behind. He didn't waste semesters pursuing Uh, something that he found out two years later he didn't like he was able to kind of mix and match and he graduated right on time so yeah if you're not sure and i mean i don't think anybody's 100 percent sure graduating high school what they want to do with the rest of their life very few and far between i would say going undecided just going there's nothing nothing no one will look down on you for going in undecided right yeah what's your take on it that's the stigma right there um a lot of people you get up, you know, that first day of class, you're like, state your name and your major, and then people say undecided, and they're like, ah, oh, this guy's stupid. Yeah. You know, and like, that's right. the stigma, because for me, you know, I wish I would have done that too, because I took the main classes for communications, mm-hmm. and when I transferred to Shawnee, even though I'd been at Kent for two years, three of my credits transferred. Don't talk nice. to me about tra- credits. Wow. Three, I had three whole <laughs> credits. Three whole credits transferred, and I yeah. was so salty about it. You know, oh, and like... I thought I had my public speaking done. Yeah. Akron got me again. Made yeah, me do man, a whole nother, made, made me do a whole nother public speaking class. Oh. I spit it out a shirt. Did you really? Oh, oh, I I was just dripping sweat, and I was like, I do fine talking, but it's my my bodily reaction to having to public speak. <laughs> just you sweating whole, all the place. Oh my god! Oh, man. Just no, I was up there just flop sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it was just a small room. It's not like I talked to a whole like convention center worth yeah but like 25 people it was still miserable it was still miserable yeah so okay so you going in undecided right Mm -hmm. that's what we kind of decided we decided to go in undecided the only thing i want to add to that is i think as our generation becomes the teachers and becomes the adults that are guiding kids from high school you mean we have to grow up a little bit what just a tiny bit as we start moving into the roles of those guiding those kids moving from high school to college, I think that stigma, because I'm never going to tell a kid, yeah. like, hey, you, you to need to know what you want to do Thank right you. now. That was that was a big point for me. Um, and, and I'm not faulting any teachers. At the end of the day, I had to make my own decisions. Right? Um, but when you're an 18-year-old kid that's got this big choice they need to make, you know, does something from someone that's already been there mm-hmm. in your ear, you're going to run with it like, oh, man, they, they've already been here. They, they, I have to choose what I need to do yeah. with my life. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that was my biggest thing. Like, it's okay to not know what you want to do when you get out of high school. Like, it's okay to be one of the kids who are like, geez, you know, like, I'm, like I don't know where I want to go. You know, instead of just going there and then clearing all that debt, mm-hmm. and I got nothing to show for it. That's, from Kent, at least. That's the other big thing with this, this current generation right. of kids going to high school, it, into college. Yeah, our parents and our parents' parents could kind of get away with that stuff yeah. and waste two years because it was thirty five dollars a credit hour. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> now now you can't. in unless you are pretty financially savvy or set off like set up pretty well, you don't really don't want to get in that, hey, I did a year and a half worth of classes and just realized I don't like any of these and now have to completely change gears into something else. Yeah. And it, it just the amount of debt that you can get in a crew so fast right. is yeah. incredible. So you're better off going in undecided. I would say that would be my number one yeah. tip to give kids. I agree. Good. 100%. So so speaking of changing gears and stuff like that, what was can you remember a moment that cuz your your timeline was Kent State, Shawnee State, yeah, chiropractic school. Do you remember a specific moment at your journey at Kent 
that caused you to change gears? Um, yeah, um, I'll fast forward. We were talking about my, uh, we had just finished my first year at Kent, and I was in my third semester there, the second year there, and um, I finished with a 1.5 or 6 in there, too. Back up. Yeah, I back up, back up. <laughs> two, two and a whole points, yeah. baby. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Um, and I remember I said, dude, they're not going to let me come back here another semester. <laughs> so I remember just, like, applying for colleges, like, in Ohio, like, just, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, Johnny State, I applied for, like, not Ohio State. I'm like, they're not going to let me come back. Like, good <laughs> Lord. Like, they already but, uh, know. Yeah, they already know. They already know the truth before I even knew it. Um, they're even more strict. They are, exactly. So I got through that semester. Um, I applied for Shawnee State, and I kind of didn't even really realize, like, that they had actually accepted me in there because I got a letter, but I just didn't open it because they actually let me back at Kent another semester. So I'm like, hmm, mm. they must really want me here. Like, you're giving me three shots at this, mm-hmm. you know? So that last semester was there was probably the worst one I've ever had. I failed out of my media power cultures class. Um, I took a human sexuality. This just shows you I had no clue I wanted to do. I'm <laughs> communication. I took a human sexuality class. I have zero clue why I took that class. I was gonna like, say I had to take something like that for my psych minor. <laughs> I'm communications. Like I had, I'm in a class with a bunch of people that are like, you know, obviously like science majors and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, human sexuality. That seems kind of cool. That's you know? me. So, like, that just gives you a perspective. I had mm-hmm. no clue what I was doing, you know? Mm. Um, I got, like, a D in that class, you know, failed the other class, um, failed my college writing stretch class, too. And I remember I was leaving my human sexuality class, my final. Um, and I was like, dude, they're like, this is it. Like, I, think I need, like, human sexuality. So a week later, I went there to talk to my advisor, and he was, like, not. Like, he was like, yeah, you know, like, this might be it. Looking you know? pretty grim over yeah, here, bud. he was like, his name was Ryan. He's like, this is, like, not looking too good. And yeah, there's a dude with a hood and a sight standing <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Who's that guy behind you? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I'm like, you could tell, like, the vibe was just a lot. Like, he was, like, feeling bad Dun, for me. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly how you could explain it. And crazy enough, I remember walking out to my car. I sat in my car. I scrolled through my Kent email. Like, I just refreshed it and pop. There goes, like, 30 minutes ago, message from the dean. I'm like, I know what this is. Literally telling me um, we are dismissing you, academically dismissing you from Kent State University. Mm. And at that time, I literally sat in my car and cried for about 10 minutes. Whether you know it's coming or not, it's different. When it you still hits you. Have to read yeah. It. Yeah. When yeah. you. You're actually reading the words and everything mm-hmm. like yeah. that. I feel like it's just. And two, and I, and I think back on that, two reasons that made me so emotional was, one, because I just failed out of college. Gosh, you know, that's horrible. Mm-hmm. And three, because, no, two, because I knew I was going to have to lie to people. Yeah. Because I was so ashamed of it. You know, people would come up to me, and I didn't want to tell people I failed out of school. So I'd just be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm like, I'm good. I'm just transferring, you know. like I, Yeah. I got like a 2.5, you know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm just transferring schools. And I never told anyone that. Mm. Even going on through all of my Shawnee career, I finally told people that I didn't just transfer. I actually failed out, and I had no option but to go to a different I finally told people that my last semester at Kent. So, yeah, but I think that you know, as as that really speaks to how powerful that societal yeah. curve is. Mm-hmm. It is that yes. you know somebody feels as though they can't say, "Hey, I messed up." Yeah, I mean, it was I'm gonna try to redeem myself, but I'm I I can't tell other people that because they're that. going to look at me different. Yeah, they're gonna think. I think that that's just human nature and self preservation yeah. of character. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Said, yeah, I mean, it took me forever to to I mean, that anxiety podcast that we recorded. It took me forever to record that. I mean, we were what twenty two, mm-hmm. twenty five episodes deep by the time I even grew the nuggets to they, talk about that stuff. It happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and oh. I had been getting comfortable behind a microphone for the last eight months to a year. Right. Yeah talking to people about being vulnerable with yourself and all this other kind of stuff. And it took me that long to, to talk about all of that internal anxiety that I dealt with in high school. And I still, you know, somewhat deal with on a day to day basis yeah. now, but that's just like you said, that self-preservation mindset, especially. And at this point, you know, we're recording this podcast because I believe that that failure and that redemption is positive. You're yeah. going to be able to relate to people that, People that have like like me, you're yeah. gonna be able to relate to people that yeah. I'm never gonna be able to relate to because I 
had an easy quote unquote pathway through school. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I had to work full time. I was in the military. I went through Walsh's nursing program, which is not the easiest nursing program in the state. Yeah. Oh, but I, I like I grounded out, but I never hit that low point of like, holy shit, what yeah, am I gonna this do? This is next? reality. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and you made a good point about how it actually me failing out of school was actually positive because I was thinking two months ago, I'm like, if they would have kept giving me chances at Kent I would have never graduated, I don't think. Like, they would have just said, you know, you can keep coming back. You know, mm-hmm. like, you, know, you got a 1.5. Eh, try another semester. Try another semester. At least it's not a zero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. At least it's not a 0.1, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, right. So I think, honestly, if I want to stay at Kent Stark, and it's nothing against them, I'll always say that. You know, they gave me multiple chances. But if I want to stay there, I don't think I would be in the, I don't think I would have a degree right now, to be honest with you. Right. So that was, the transition was rough, you know, obviously, but it was necessary. Yeah, so so when you so when you were in the process of making that transition, you know, what did that gap between failing out of Kent and okay. being accepted and getting to Shawnee, what did that feel like? Oh, uh, it felt like I was literally living a lie because I had family, you know, it was the summertime, obviously, family come up. What you doing? How's you know, school going? Oh, great. The school's going great. Even though I just failed out, it's great. Yeah. You know, I'm it's awesome. Could be better. Yeah, you know, I'm <laughs> doing fine. Well, why are you transferring? Ah, uh, nah, I mean just Kent didn't have the degree, I mean, the major that I switched to, so I just decided to go to Shawnee Which State. is a good excuse. Yeah, <laughs> see? Oh, I thought, hey, man, I took time to think this out because I was so embarrassed about it, Yeah. you know? And um, my mom would have just, like, she would have been sad for me, too, and I'm like, I never told her until I actually graduated that I failed out of school. I can't start. Oh, boy. Yeah, I literally told her at graduation. I was like, by the way, I didn't just transfer. I failed out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally what I told her. And she's like, I kind of know. She's like, I kind of knew. And I'm like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, you just kind of just transferred out of nowhere. And she's like, it seemed kind of suspicious anyways. And I'm like, ah, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm going to wait until I do something reason, super though. positive, Definitely. and then I'm going to tell you that oh, I messed I, up. I didn't have the balls to tell her because I know she would be so disappointed in me. And, you know, that's how that summer was, that transition between Kent and Shawnee State was just me just feeling, like, so afraid. Like, I wanted to tell someone the truth, but I literally told nobody. Like, everyone that asked me about my school, I was like, I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. Great, you know? Like, everything's going well. In reality, I was, like, in such, like, a dark place when it came to academics. Like, I just, like, I wanted to talk to someone, but I just felt like I couldn't. Now, now what did it – do you remember the first person you told, and what did it feel like to have that weight lifted off your shoulders? Like, the first person I told that I failed out of school? Yeah. Um, That was actually my friend Shane and Quando. And um, I literally told him, like, guys, I never told anybody this, and this was just last semester. I'm like, but, like, I – didn't just come down here just to come down here. I failed out of Kent, and they're like, they were surprised because my GPA is so well down there. They're like, really? Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you tell the listeners what you graduated with from Shawnee? Um, I well, it was three point five. Then I got a B in my kinesiology, so it's three point four nine. Yeah, but I got my uh, actual transcript back, and it's a three point four. Yeah, yeah. whoop de doo, whatever. Yeah, I know, yeah, thing. darn. Still better than a one point four. Oh, I so know, yeah. right? Goodness <laughs> gracious! It's like, yeah, I mean, the transition from there and getting to tell them that. Made me feel so much better though because right, I felt like I wasn't afraid anymore and I felt like I wasn't embarrassed and it's crazy that it took me all that just to realize that it's okay to make mistakes. Mm. So, but see, part of me thinks sometimes it's better not to tell people that kind yeah. of stuff because it's one, it's really none of their business. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Two, yeah. for me, if I, I have some, if I let's say. I had been in your shoes and I had flunked out like right away. Yeah. And I told somebody and they were like, oh, it's okay. You know, it happens. I will lull myself into a false sense of security. Yeah. Mm. See, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. And I would be like, oh, I guess people like enabling that that negative mindset. Then you start running into other people like, oh, I flunked out too. And you know, I just went and got a job. You're right. That's actually, a, I didn't think of that either. That's actually a very good so, point. See, this is why we don't have him prepare for podcasts. Because, <laughs> ah, I mean, this, <laughs> free th- this is a free true. thinking. But th- th- I know me. Yeah. As soon as somebody gives me positive reinforcement on a negative situation, I will spin it in my head be like, well, I guess it's really not that bad. Yeah, you're right. Well, then right. I, you probably, in me, 
I then probably wouldn't have had the drive to pick it up at a, another school yeah. and then put all my eggs in one basket there. Or, I agree. you know, you get one semester in there, you kind of do bad, you tell someone the truth, and all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe I'm just not made to go yeah. to college. Maybe right. I should right. just start looking for a job. So personally speaking, I think it's better you didn't tell anybody until you got That's to the it. point where you were. Total and then point. it's then it's kind of like, then it doesn't matter. You're like, look at me now. I know that it, it sucks what happened before, but obviously it lit a fire under my ass. And yeah, now I'm out here, you know, banging it out at another school and then so on and so forth. But that's just my spin on it. I, I'll keep stuff like that to myself to help that's motivate a- myself because when obviously I deeply care about the, my family and people that are around me and what they think that I'm doing. But once they start feeding into what I'm doing, I will then convince myself that's that, that it's, it's all right. Yes. Yeah. And that's a good mm, point because yeah. like people, it's always that mentality. Well, everybody else is doing it. Yeah. You know, exactly. like everybody else but is that failing takes, out. That yeah, takes a thing. massive level of self understanding yeah, to know that you, that you shouldn't tell someone. Yeah. So I'm not saying that's good for everybody to do, but me personally, I wouldn't have told anybody until it was far. And I've, and I've done that before with right. certain things. I agree. Yeah. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So you told those people you had this huge weight kind of lifted off your shoulders. Oh, for sure. What did it feel like on graduation day from Shawnee State? Dude, I honestly, I'm surprised I didn't cry like a little baby <laughs> on the stage. I cry because, all the time. Yeah, dude. I, I I've realized yeah. through this whole process, I'm a lot more emotional than I tell people. I, I realized that. I'll tell people. Hey, man, I, I cry when I graduated boot and I got that Airman's coin. I was just like, yeah, it was gone. Dude. I was, it was over. I'll tell people, I'm like, nah, dude. I'm, I'm a pretty chill guy. And then I'll start crying about that. But, like, I just, it was, like, a sense of relief because I never, even at graduation practice the day before, sitting in that chair, like, watching them go through, like, the practice and stuff like that, if you would have told me this was my reality in four years, I wouldn't have called you crazy. But I'm like, dude, I just fell out of school. Ain't no way I'm right. You know, especially with this kind of GPA and stuff like that. So, like, it was, like, it made me feel so much better about myself. It made me feel like that this isn't, when I felt like it was the end, it's not the end. That I can, it's just a stepping mm, stone. I like that a lot. So, because at that point, man, like, I thought that was it. You know, I'm failing out of Kent. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was it. And I thought that was the end, but I didn't realize it was just a stepping stone. That's all it really was. So. Right. So, you know, to get to that positive experience of graduation, there had to have been multiple obstacles that you encountered at Shawnee, oh, too. Oh, too. Yeah. Because, you know, failing out of Kent was probably the first kick in the butt. You know, I mean, all, all crying in your car, and that kind of hitting that bottom. And starting to scratch and claw your way back out. Do you do you think that you were instantly motivated right off the bat to try to go back to school, oh, or no. was there that period of time where you were just kind of in that abyss? You know, I'll be honest with you, and I actually never told anybody else this either. When I went to Shawnee, I'm like, I'm gonna fail out of here too. <laughs> like I, I, <laughs> well, I, I don't know how you yeah. wouldn't think that. I right. literally, I, I'm not even joking with you though. I remember sitting, I was living in Cedar House my first year there, and I remember it was our moving day. I went there Friday, and I had to come back because I was still working at another job here, and I came back Sunday. I remember sitting in my bed. I'm like, bro, I'm about to fail out of this school. Oh my gosh! I was like, I was like, oh my gosh! I can't imagine feeling like that. Yeah, I literally sat on my little bunk beds we had there, Mm -hmm. and I was just like, dude, like this is about to be a whole year of just some crap, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, like. I'm just yeah, kind of, I, like it should be laughing because that's not. No, funny. But like I can't. I'm just picturing him sitting there like, well, well here we go again. Yeah, that's, that's literally honestly how round two, fellas. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah. Like let's see how many schools I can fill up in a while. You know? like, let's just make. Let's just go <laughs> for the record. Up. You know. You know how many dean's letters I have back <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> I got them framed on my wall. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! That that was, and even then, I remember actually doing like decently well. Um, the first couple weeks, and I was like, "Man, I got like, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good." Rejuvenated, yeah. Do, 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 new school, new me. I said, "Maybe I won't fail out the first semester," you yeah. know. And you got the Rocky theme music playing in the background, running oh, up the stairs, yeah. like, "Yeah, I'm was, doing this." I was on like cloud nine, man, and like midterms came, and I was doing well. Besides the stupid English class that I was not doing well in. Um. Oh come on! You had Dr. Butler oh, in high Carol, school. Yeah. yeah oh, Carol. Carol. Yeah, yeah. Oh, first name basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Carol. Carol. No, I'm just playing. She was a nice lady. She was. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> good English teacher. Yeah, she was definitely though. a Very. little bit abrasive, but good English teacher. Yeah, enough. she was, and she. I actually not to sidetrack. I actually saw her like a couple months ago. Very nice. Very nice. Um, but I remember I was at the midterm at Shawnee State. My grades were pretty good, actually. You know, um, like I was like. Passing everything, and I originally came down to do the PTA program, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't know how transfers worked at that time. 
I thought when I came out here, they weren't going to worry about Kent anymore. I thought Kent was like, yeah, yeah. Pass, you know what I'm saying? Please don't talk to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, don't ask them like, about anything. Don't ask them about my GP or yeah, nothing like, like that, please. Not listing a job on your <laughs> <Right>. resume. <laughs> so, you don't need to talk to them. <laughs> so I actually went to my advisor, Lindsay, and um, she's like, so you want to do the PTA program, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's what I came down here for. Physical therapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's like, okay, you know, what's your grades looking like this semester? And I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're sweet. They're fine. Yeah. You know, great. Then I remember her literally, I was sitting right here. She was sitting diagonal of me on her computer. She's like, all right, let me just check those Kent grades. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, You had another dun, Please, dun, no. dun. I mean, how many moments. those moments did I literally have? Jesus I was gonna Christ. Say, yeah, you just have the, the Reaper standing in the background. It's yeah. And like, when I get again. nervous, I'm like you a little bit. I start just to sweat, sweat a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I think she could notice my nervous because I was like, <laughs> right. I'm just like. <laughs> like a psych uh, patient. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, don't look at the grades. So she looks at them, and she didn't say a word. She just went, you could see her eyes widen a little bit. She was just, like, a little bit, like, concerned, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember getting out a Post-it note and a pen, and she did, like, a little bit of math on the pen, mm-hmm. the Post-it note and stuff, mm-hmm. and she showed me, and all it said was 5.4. And I'm like, what is that? Like, or something like that to get in the class, to get in the program? Mm-hmm. She goes, like, you would literally need to get a 5.4 GPA just to be qualified because of your Kent grades. And I was like, Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and I was like, literally, like, I am gonna fail out of here. <laughs> like, like, mm. you're like, then, I'm even doing good now, and I'm yeah, still gonna fail out of here. Yeah, you know, and darn, I, I would always say, you know, my whole, whenever that would come back up, I was like, man, those darn can't grades. Like, mm-hmm. I would always say that my whole four years, like, if something like where I had to reflect on them. They didn't give you an option to go back and like retake them and replace the grades, or no, it was mm-hmm. it was that GPA that kept affecting me, and um, really, and they were like. Yeah, man, like, you have to get this GPA, and obviously, a 5.4 is freaking phenomenal. Like, that is, that right. is, this might be a dumb question. Can you, like, actively choose not to transfer credits? That's what I was wondering. I asked her. Is right that, there. is, can you do, like, if you did real bad, and you were just like, I'm an incoming freshman, I've definitely never been to college before. <laughs> well, <I don't, laughs> you know what I, that's what I, I honestly you thought. Sign. You have to, like, sign, but, like, hey, you gotta go request Thank them, you. and then send them over. Can you just actively mm. choose? Do you know? That's I, why I was so. Dude, I never, like I said, I never had to do that. I went straight through Uncle Sam paid for me know? to go to school. <laughs> No, okay, that was a negative off camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, they're like, she's gonna, she's to gonna be like, "You guys are messing up the frame." Like, <laughs> no, but I—that's what I was so confused. This table keeps bending, and the mic keeps moving. Make sure that your mic doesn't like fall off the table. I, I cranked this bad boy. <laughs> 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 okay. But um, yeah, like to that point, because obviously. Uh, so I did bad in some classes, right, not right, right. terrible, but they give you the option. Though. You can just go back, you can retake it once, and then yeah. But I think that's better, if you stay at the same university, not if you transfer. Yeah, and if you transfer, I think it depends. If you use FAFSA and stuff like that, I think the grades follow you regardless. Yeah, regardless. I, did use fa- I definitely use uh, FAFSA. Yeah. Uh, well, see, I was like so confused when she told me that because I didn't sign any papers to like let you guys see my grades. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like, I thought I, thought I had those to disappear. I burnt those bad boys up. I thought that was. Like, you mean there's Kent? electronic yeah. records? I was like, Kent who? Kent what? <laughs> like, I never went to Kent, you know? I, I went to high school with a my kid name's named Kent. My name's not Kent. Yeah, I don't know, right? That's, yeah. that's not who's in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was actually, like, startled. I was sad and startled by it. And, um, long, true story, Um, I went to the den. It's called the den, the Bears den, because, you know, Shawnee State, we're the Bears. Mm-hmm. So that's where we eat at. And I just remember talking to my friend. I'm like, dude, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Like, I can't get into the, the, the PTA program. You basically just have this. You know, I ankle ball ball and chain dragging right. you down. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, I literally told him, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do now, dude. Like, I literally can't get into the PTA program. Um, obviously, can't go back to Kent. You know, they don't want me back there. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I have not. the letter to prove it. They sent me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, I said, go look at my email. I literally sent the letter to Yanko. I was like, they, of them. Like, yeah, I read it. Yeah, yeah, them tell me that I'm academically dismissed, you know. Um, but I was just like, dude, I don't know what I'm what I'm going to do now. And he was like, you just got to find something. Like, what are you interested in? And, like, not to sidetrack, but I just told him, like. Dude, this entire podcast is just sidetracked. So just, yeah. just let it it's let it roll. Good. Yeah. Let it roll. No, I'm saying, like, our personalities, we're just squirrels. Like, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Send it. Fair enough. Full send. Full send. But I just told him, I said, like, you know, I'm in this. I like PT. And not PT. I like anatomy. You know, I enjoy stuff like that. Learning about the human body and stuff. Exercise. I like to work out. Stuff like that. So. I was like, geez, I might as well take introduction to exercise science, you mm-hmm. know? 
See what you think. Yeah, and see what I think, and I did really well in it. And um, from there, that was just that's a whole another story about me kickstarting. You know, back from where I was at that point, and then getting to where I could actually get paid to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a whole. That's a So, yeah, just getting to the point where I actually had good grades where I actually could, you know, be successful and set myself up for success at Shawnee, you know, so. Well, I mean, getting to the point where you actually are pursuing that academic excellence, that had to be, I mean, that's a little bit of a transition in mentality, period. Being able to say, hey, you know, I'm going to decide that I'm really going to push myself academically now. Yeah. Because you ended up getting to the point where you push to the point where you have such good grades that you're graduating and what made you want to apply for chiropractic school? Oh, that was actually crazy enough. I actually always wanted to be a doctor. Um, like I had always wanted to have a white coat. I actually wrote this in my paper to the chiropractic school, like my what my dreams were, you know? Right. You know, so I actually had always wanted to be a doctor. I just never thought it was achievable for me, you know? You know, like having a 1.5 at Kent South and, you know, failing out of Kent. It's just like, it seems like a dream that's just too distant for me, you know? Yeah, too far away to reach. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, it's not possible. You know, I can't, <laughs> what, if I applied to a chiropractic school and they saw my GPA, I can't, they'd be like, oh, you know, no. So it got to the point where I was actually having good grades and I made the dean's list my, what was it, second year at Shawnee State. And I was just like, you know, I think I can do this now, you know? Like, I'm feeling comfortable, you know, with myself and my academic level. Nice that I can actually pursue, you know, this dream that I thought was so impossible for me to get. So at that point, I'm just like, yeah, you know, chiropractic is something I've always enjoyed. I actually watched, like, back cracking. Oh, um, how can you not? Oh, I love it. Oh, dude, trust me. You look through my YouTube history right now, and, like, it's just like, you know. their neck snap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, the spinal manipulation, yeah. stuff like that, you know, adjustments and stuff. And I've always been into that kind of stuff. So from there, I kind of just went with, like, you know, that's a doctor. It's not a medical doctor, but it's something that I've always enjoyed. So, and now I feel like it's actually something I can in my grasp. You know, mm -hmm. so that you're capable of yeah. doing and helping people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, just helping people in general. I think if that's kind of what you identify as your calling, it's really, yeah. really easy to try to figure out where that calling and what you're good at kind of meet. You know, yeah, and where they meet. Mm -hmm. You know, but identifying what you're actually passionate about should be the first priority. And then figuring out, okay, what aligns with that should be the second. Because like you said, the biggest issue that you had when you were at Kent wasn't that you weren't, you just weren't passionate about anything. Yeah, you I wasn't. You figured out what you were super excited about, and that's what caused you to not be good at school. And that's, Obviously, yeah. getting accepted into chiropractic school proves that you're good at school. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, what I wanted to ask you was, do you contribute your success at Shawnee more to like, hey, I don't want to fail out anymore, so I'm really going to buckle down and do this? Or was it kind of like, hey, this is just easier now because I like what I do? I think, and I know this sounds so cliche, but I think it's actually both. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's, I didn't want to get embarrassed again because I'm tired of lying about the Kent thing. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You know, I'm like. It's a, it's exhausting. Whole yeah, thing. it is. It, it really is. It was just mentally exhausting, you know, not being able to tell people and telling people this fake thing that I had to keep going for a while. Story you made up. Yeah, exactly, you know? And it was also that I felt like I enjoyed doing this stuff. I didn't, when I was in my college writing stretch and doing those communication classes, I was just going through the motions and I'm one right. of those people, I feel like I need to be passionate about it and if I'm passionate about it, then I can do well with it. School opened up a lot for me when I finally got done with all, nobody likes the gen ed classes. Yeah. But once you get yeah. through those and you start I agree. concentrating on the stuff you care about, yep. you're like, oh, wow. It's, it comes to you more naturally. Not, well, that's yeah. what everybody told me that nursing, the nursing program was the hardest. Mm -hmm. You know, once you got into it, that's when it really started kicking your butt. I thought that all the nursing classes I took were easier than the statistics class that I took. Yeah. You know, I got a C in stats. Really? I am horrible at math. 
<laughs> but I got an A in pathophysiology, which is supposed to be one of the hardest classes for the nursing one, mm. because I just nerd out over anything anatomical or pathophysiological yeah, okay. of the body. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't like looking at Greek letters and trying to figure out equations. Oh. That's how my brain works. I'd rather figure out why, why you're coughing. Thank you. That's yeah. a, I'm the same. Dude, I go, the Dr. Google, you know, I Google things. Um, oh, yeah. you know. Khan Academy got me through nursing school. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> Khan Academy. Sponsor us. <laughs> Please. But so now that, you know, as, as we're kind of getting towards the end of, you know, kind of wrapping up that story, what does it feel like now sitting behind that microphone, knowing that you've been through all that, you've accomplished all that, and now you're stepping into what you consider your dream? I do. Honestly, like, and I just went over how emotional I am. It does make me emotional because – these are things that I never, I just never thought that I could do, you know? And you get to the point where, like, you're failing out of school and you're like, now this is just a me. Like, I just don't think I'm made cut out for this stuff, you know? Like, that's when you start, you start to have all these mental questions. And being here at this point just makes me believe that, you know, even though I felt like it was the end, that it wasn't. That this was just something that I needed to get over. The hump I need to get over. So, I don't know, man. It just... It makes me happy. It makes me emotional. It makes me sad that I even failed out of school. It's like a overflowing of emotions, really, right. getting to this point. Well, and like I said, I think that that, that failing out of failing out of school in the first place is going to give you the ability to, yeah, um, be able to relate to a lot of people that you wouldn't have been able to relate to yeah. otherwise. And you know, I what? think it's a lot of people that don't think right. that they're relatable to even in the first yeah. place, right? Because I guess that's the counter argument to what I said earlier about not telling anyone. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people don't, I think a lot of people don't tell anyone. Yeah. So when it does happen to someone, they're like, I'm the only one that's ever flunked out ever that I know of. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that it brings a whole slew of other issues into it as well. But yeah. I, like he said, the, those of you who have gone through that or are currently going through, through it, that, it's, you're like, not alone. Like he said, it's, yeah, you're not alone and it's not the end. It should be, you know, a stepping stone. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Looking I agree. at it as a stepping stone, and and it's creating your own legacy. You know, what I mean, you right. decide where your legacy is created, where your legacy ends, and you can fail, you can stumble, you can hit the ground hard, but it'll be like it's all just detours. Yeah, and I mean, in at the end of the day, some people you have to take their advice with a grain of salt. Um, I give you a good example. There was a person I went to school, and I won't name drop her. We went to school with, and um, I was on the bus with her my junior year in high school. And a lot of people know me for high school, kind of not really academic, just being like more of just goofy. Yeah, goofy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> goofy. The Thank you. Class clown. There you yeah. go. Yeah. And I, I was friendly, though. You know, I was friends with people in the band because I was in the band. I was friends with people on the football team. I was friends with people, tennis team, everything, you know? So, goofy. yeah, exactly. I, that's, well, yeah, he was awesome in high school. You could always count on Malik to make you laugh. Mm. So I remember sitting on the bus and with one of the people that we both know and we were talking about college and we were, I was only a junior. She was actually a sophomore and everybody was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going here, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that. And I remember her telling me, as I said, I was going to go to college. She was like, nah, you won't survive. Like, you, like, Oof. yeah, yeah. And like, it, would get, it got awkwardly quiet because mm-hmm. people, I guess people were like, oh yeah, he's not going to make it through college. And I just remember sitting there like thinking, wow. Is this really what everybody that's thinks what of me? Yeah, yeah. That's what, is this really what everybody thinks of me that I'm just not going to be able to get through school and I remember a week after failing out of Kent, um, I saw her post something, and I said, wow, man, she's right. And that, that really, like, hurt me. I'm like, wow. Right. You know, she's actually. I proved somebody right. Yeah, and, and in a bad way, you know. So yep. I just wish that, in hindsight, I would have took her advice with a grain of salt and realized that, you know what, she doesn't know who I really am or what I'm capable of doing. Mm-hmm. But at that time, I thought, she was like, wow, she knew she knew me before I knew me. Yeah. You know, like all that stuff comes flooding back into your you, memory. Yeah, when, when it does, man. Happen like that. And, and I almost like, that's like having situations where you're like broke all of a sudden. You think about all the times that you're like, man, I bought that McChicken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Case, yeah. I Thank you. These three times yeah. this week. Like, man, maybe I should only got one four for four from there. You know, not right. three of them. You know, oh, I, <laughs> wish, I wish I could get away with a four for four. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to, to kind of wrap up, wrap all of this up before we get into, you know, the closing credits to really say I, I. Just want to give you, not that you haven't had the floor this entire time, right? But I want to give you the floor and, and allow you to kind of just express what you want to express as far as lessons that you learned or anything that you want to really kind of distill down and say, hey, I've had this on my heart for a while yeah. and wanting to tell people. 
this is what I want you to know about me. I think my biggest point in and I hope that there's younger kids that, you know, listen to this podcast. You know, a lot of people listen to the podcast and I'm hoping that this can reach some high schoolers that are just graduating or some college freshmen, you know? Like as we uh, talked to you about before, it's okay to go in there not knowing what you want to do. And it's okay to not start school right away. Um, if I would have done it over again, I would have decided what I want to do, work, and then went to school when I know I had known what I had wanted to achieve at that time. Yeah. So I guess just to tell younger people, like, it's okay to just take a step back and say, I need to find out what I want to do with my life before just rushing into something. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, like he said, too. Take a year off. Yeah, you know, it's okay to have a gap year. year. Yep. It really is. But that Uncle Sam forcing me to have a, a semester off is the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, because you, you have time to think about everything. And, I mean, gosh, guys, just, like, think about that. Telling it, asking an 18-year-old what you want to do for the rest of your life. That's, I don't know. why That's always that is just, so asinine to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, could you, like, let's go back and think about when we were 18. Like, yeah. I'm, and, like, I'm 24. I have no idea. What yeah. I mean. talk, talk to me eight months ago and right. tell me, right. like, be like, oh, is this what you want to do? Yeah. Like, no, I don't know. They just want me to come here and talk about myself. Thank you. I'm yeah. talking about myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's like, imagine like those 18 year olds that are in that position right now where they feel like, oh, she just got accepted into OU. He's going to um, Ohio State, Bowling Green, KSU, blah, blah, blah. And this kid's sitting there thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, but I got to go. Dumbass. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I got to do something. Yeah, well, but I got to do I something. And, and the reality is, they don't. You can take a step back. Mm -hmm. And like that is and just such a stigma. You you're not going to realize that you're in an assembly line until you take a step back and look at the assembly line. Yeah, I think exactly. The Thank overall you. That's a beautiful mentality point. needs to change, as in everyone, especially. I don't know if you guys shared this, you know, sentiment with me, but as I was graduating, I felt like the norm was that everybody knew what they were doing and knew where they were going. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think if you can change that norm to most people don't know what they're doing, yeah. but they are going. Yeah. And, and the the few and far between are the kids who are like, hey, I did post secondary. I'm now going to school for, you know, nursing or to be a doctor or a recording artist or whatever it is. And oh, yeah, this is what I, I, I do. I think the majority in, in, are right. just kind of going along with the flock. I agree. No, I totally but know. But that's not how I on. felt. Right. If I had felt like <laughs> most other kids in my grade were graduating with not a clue what they were doing, I probably wouldn't have felt so bad about myself. Yeah. Right. And but they made me feel like everybody I looked at on towards my senior I'm going to be a doctor when yeah, I'm 18, like, you know. Oh, wow, I, I already know what I'm doing. Yeah. They're already, you know, four steps deep into a career right. and I'm over here like bro, Halo 3 was the best game ever, ever. in <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> right. But my I mean, thumbs are so strong. I was like, what can I do with this? That's a <laughs> That's a great point, and it even goes back to what you were saying on the flip side, too, where, and I always tell people this, like, when they're going through something emotional, it's okay to be sad as long as you know you can pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to sit there and think about everything and have all those emotions and everything like that as long as you know that in the long run you have to pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. Keep going. You know? So, like, it's okay to take a step back and say, I don't know what I'm doing with college right now. I'm going to work, but I know that I want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, like I know that I want to go and I know that I'm going to have my mind made up in this year, but I'm just giving myself a year to get myself together, yeah. you know, because they'll look at that and they'll see all their friends in school, but they probably have no clue. Those guys in school are probably just accruing debt with yeah. nothing to show for it. Yep. You know, right. So I guess that's my biggest, my biggest thing I want to tell people. Don't be afraid to take a step back. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take it. Don't just be afraid to look at everything and just consider all your options instead of saying, I got to do this. Because it's the first thing that came to my head, like when the communications, yeah. just because it had less math, I took it. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what it was. But because everybody else was in school, I felt like I had to just make that gut decision and just go with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I honestly ended up regretting it, you know? So, because all I got from Kent now is what, like $13,000 in debt from just Kent, you yeah. know? No, and no degree from it, you know? So, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. an academic dismissal lesson. Yeah, this is a, this a nice little dismissal nice lesson. Little dismissal, little yeah. Hey, conversation between me and the dean <laughs> oh man yeah it was a beautiful letter i mean yeah and they said they i've funny i just read the email they're like you're dismissed from like 
this branch and this branch <laughs> and this branch. You can apply to Astribula, Kent Stark. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. You, yeah, like, like, you don't want me here yeah, at all yeah. anywhere. You know? Okay. It almost felt like that. I literally, if like, I, was, I told one of my friends, I'm like, dude, I swear, like, it almost felt like if I walked up on campus, they'd be like, no, get away. You know? They, they just hold up a picture. They're like, we yeah. knew you would come. <laughs> like, 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 they warned us. It's on like a wanted poster. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, do they keep like wanted posters for people that failed yeah. out of school? You know what I'm saying? Like, security like, guard just got a wall. He's like, I've got to remember yeah. all these faces. Yeah, I know, right? So like, but I I get it, and I will always tell people I will, I can never be mad at Kent. They gave me multiple chances. It was just my own stupidity and lack of not knowing what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really their fault at all. And I mean, it's it not really your fault. Yeah, you know, it's just it takes time. That's something that will take time. That colleges don't allot you the time to figure out most of the time unfortunately. yeah but yeah i agree so go ahead take a step back try to figure out what you got going on and yeah consider all your options man take some take some tips right out of malik's book here and and understand that you don't always have to be a part of that um assembly line that the social pressure may or may not actually exist mm-hmm. um, yeah and i agree it's okay to not know what you want to do we're all sitting here telling you that we still have no idea what we want to do when we grow up and yeah. i have a degree he yeah. has a degree he has a degree. Yeah. Or also I could work like, in the circus next month. I, I yeah, really we don't, don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> but no but the beauty of it is that we're figuring it out. We're not just sitting here saying that we don't know and we don't care. You know? And we're that's not doing the key. anything about it. That's the key. That's the key. I think that the key Thank you. is just consistently pushing and trying to learn right. and seize opportunities and, and push. Follow yeah. your that's passions. Thank you. What, what as long you as you about. as long as you know, you know. Right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See how that came all back around. Yeah. Circle buddy. Boom. Pen drop. Yeah. Shut the cameras off. <laughs> right, I gotta leave so now. If you wanna, if you guys wanna support the Apex podcast, first of all, thank you, Malik, for coming. Hey, I appreciate it. it. Thank you, thank you, you know, guys, though. Seriously, conversation. I appreciate it, guys. Thank uh, you. Looking forward to to putting this out. If you wanna support the Apex podcast, one of the best ways to do so is to go to www.patreon.com backslash the Apex podcast. Um, there's multiple donation levels there. If you do a five dollar donation, we'll shout your name out live on the show. Um, and then we'll also send you an Apex sticker in the mail. So, and a personal letter. And a personal letter. Oh, yes. There we go. I have horrible uh-huh. handwriting, but I'll make sure it's legible. Yeah. So, we don't, <laughs> have, we don't have any donors to announce this episode, but we're hoping that there'll be some to announce next episode. Yeah. Um, and then, if anything else, you can follow us on Instagram at, at underscore the Apex Podcast underscore. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at, at underscore the Apex Podcast or at Doc Holiday 92. That would be me. Um, and then Two L's. He's also Doc Holiday ninety two on Instagram. All right, man. I'm gonna give him a follow, man. Give oh, you a follow. Yeah. yeah. For you sure. have anything you want to shout out? Uh, nah, man. I, mean, I, w- I honestly just want to take the time to thank you guys again no, because this, I really this is where appreciate you plug it. Plug your back cracking Instagram. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, dude. That's I mean, almost you need to, you, yeah, you need if to you, start setting up Instagram account. Oh man, snapping next. Well, I mean, legally. People are still going to be listening to this five years from now. Yeah, right. Well, if you do want to follow me, I mean, my life is kind of interesting. I don't post too much, but I mean, you, you post some. Probably post more than RJ. Yeah, RJ just I'm horrible. Posting. Did you really? Oh, okay. I'm well, bad. he posted once a year. Did you really? I yeah. It's like an I'm annual one. thing. Oh, no, it was. It was Valentine's Day. Me and my girlfriend, 2018 Valentine's Day, 2019. I respect the consistency. Back. We're trying <laughs> to tell people that he can run their social media. I don't. <laughs> I feel like he posts a year. Apart. I don't know my goodness. Like my personal stuff is a little bit secluded. Yeah, but that's fair. That's that works. No touchy the cable. Sorry, my bad. All right, <laughs> that's fair. Let's wrap this up before I accidentally break all the mics. And <laughs> all right, y'all. We will catch you next time. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, make sure you keep chasing that apex.